Hello, Larry at Hagemeisters. Today we're going to talk about uh, voltage drop tests on a starter. And then also we're going to talk about the, uh, the cube relay that we use to take the load off the ignition switch for the starter solenoid. This is the uh, voltmeter we're going to use for the voltage drop test. Quite simple, it's just an old school analog scale voltmeter. And it, I've got it turned way down to 5 volts here, which is our lower scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to uh, hook up the battery cables and then show you how to do a voltage drop test. Again, you can use about any voltmeter, digital, analog, whatever, it doesn't matter. The voltage drop test is essentially done the same way. So we're going to do the positive cable first. So we hook up our positive lead to here and we take our negative lead and hook it here. So basically this, this cable is a positive and this voltmeter is paralleling that. And so when we hit the starter, we're going to watch what this voltmeter does. It cannot go above one volts. And of course one is is our bottom scale here right underneath the 10. So let's try it here, see what happens. Our needle, our needle barely moves. So really hardly any voltage drop at all on that terminal. So let's do our negative next, which is basically opposite. We take our positive off, put our negative on the terminal, and put our positive to the body of the starter. That way we're paralleling the ground cable that's grounding this whole starter. This is just an old uh, GM starter, is, is a Delco starter. So let's watch that voltage drop now. Again, just, just barely moved the needle. So really no voltage drop at all to speak of. And these are four gauge cable, which is the size of, of uh, typical 12 volt cars. So now what we want to do on purpose is cause ourselves a voltage drop so you can see it easily on the voltmeter. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this cable here. Take the negative off. I'm going to just install this end. And for a ground, all I'm going to use is just a small piece of wire. This is just a jumper clip, probably 16 or 18 gauge. But the point of this is, we're going to parallel that wire and watch the voltage drop, but you'll notice the starter changes. There's no sound of the starter change. It, it, it sounds the same way, but it's got way too much of a voltage drop. So let's go ahead and do that test. So I'll hook my ground back up. Now we're paralleled, just like we were before. Now we're going to watch our voltmeter and watch for the voltage drop test. jumps clear up and our wire jumps as well because it's being overloaded but my point is too the starter sounds exactly the same and that's what we accomplish by a voltage drop test is that the starter sounds the same but there's way too much drop if that starter was under strain it would just it would be way too much for this small wire of course but this is just demonstration purposes when you find that kind of a problem, we really need to start tracing the wires in the vehicle to find out where the ground is bad. We're doing the ground side, but it can also be on the positive side. But the demonstration here is just to show you that the ground has a huge problem, which of course is way too small a wire. We're trying to simulate resistance. And with that said, the vehicle needs to be looked at to find out where the ground problem is at because the starter is, is you know, drawing its amps to operate and the ground can't carry it. So that's, that's an easy test to do. So with all the voltage drop tests we did here today, just remember you can do a voltage drop test on any circuit. We're doing a starter today, but any circuit in the vehicle can be a voltage drop test. Now, one thing about the voltage drop test is that I'm doing all this on a bench right here. So everything's pretty close by, but that's the reason for the length of these leads. So this old meter right here, look at how long these leads are. So it's very easy to hook this up at the battery and then move your lead all the way down to the starter to do your voltage drop test. Uh, if you don't have long, these long leads, you can 
put some jumper leads on to get your voltmeter so it can reach and check the voltage drop test. But a lot of times it's rusty grounds, uh, painted terminals, uh, corrosion, on and on. But without a voltage drop test, uh, you really don't know what the voltage is at the starter when you're trying to crank it. There's plenty of videos online about voltage drop tests. We tried to do this one today as simple as possible so you could see how it's done with, uh, with the test meter that we used. Uh, we're going to include a diagram of this on our uh, website that you can print and uh, use to do your own voltage drop tests. Thanks for watching. Hi, Larry from Hagemeisters. Today we're going to talk about the little cube relays that we use on the uh, st starters to take away the key load to activate the solenoid on the starter. I'm going to explain that today, how that works. So this is just a typical uh, Delco starter here on a GM product. And as you can see, we've got it wired with a, with a cube relay here. And the purpose for that is to take the load off the ignition system. When the ignition system has to carry the load of this solenoid, it's also robbing current from the coil during crank time to get the engine started. So we addressed this earlier in an earlier video about the solenoid assist spring, but this is when we hang the relay on the starter and I wanted to show you exactly how that works. Okay, so here's the, uh, the basically old key wire that would have not had a relay and we go ahead and use it. Got a, got a pretty good spark here, and now here's the relay that's installed that carries a load instead of the key switch. Can hardly see any arc at all there. Now let's go ahead and, uh, and unhook this here so we can just make the solenoid click. Okay, so we got this together now. And I'm sure lots of people have heard this before when the starter doesn't work, but they hear a click. In our business, we hear that all the time. Well, the starter's just clicking. Well, let's simulate that and see what happens. That's a lot of current. Now we're going to make the relay. Not near the amount of current. So just to show you how bad that is, we're going to do an amperage draw test on that and to show what kind of load that is. Okay, the reason why I unhooked this from the battery post here on the solenoid is that we're simulating a bad connection or maybe the solenoids wore out the contacts in the solenoids or whatever, but when we remove the battery cable, we're still able to activate the solenoid to simulate the click like you would see in a vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and see what that, what that load is now. We'll watch this amp meter here and watch what kind of current that solenoid draws almost 60 amps. That's a lot. So then the relay will simulate that one. Again, can't even see it move. So when that happens in, in a vehicle and you have no start relay, cube relay like we have here, that's exactly what your ignition switch is seeing. All the safety switches, all the current back up to the key, when that starter is clicking is seeing this. That's a lot of current to be going through a key switch. And people are still trying to start the car, the vehicle, click, click. And during that time, that load is excessive through that key switch. So the cube relay is the one thing that, that takes the load off the ignition circuit. And that's what we were demonstrating here today, that uh, taking that load off is really critical because when starters start to fail, solenoids fail, bad connections, it doesn't strain the ignition circuit in the car. The relay takes that load away from the key switch.